Adam Carolla went on Joe Rogan's podcast and he got into politics a little bit and it's ugly and it's dumb. Let's watch and then we'll break it down. There was a time in this country when if you saw a guy driving a brand new Cadillac and, you know, the, the father and son were walking down the street and here comes Mr. Johnson, his big black Cadillac going up to the top of the hill. There was a time when the father would look at the son and say, you study hard, you work hard, you get it done. And one day you can have big shiny Cadillac and live up at the top of the hill. Now, smash cut to 2015, the son's looking at the dad going, where the fuck does he have that Cadillac? And we're driving a Isuzu Trooper. This is bullshit. Let's go throw a rock at that guy's Cadillac, or let's go see what we can get from Mr. Johnson. See, there's, there's a mentality of, you and I have the mentality of, and, and it's what this country was basically settled on, which is go get some for yourself. We have a larger and larger group looking around going, wait a minute, what are they doing? And how, how can I get some of what they got? Mm -hmm. You know, this whole country is, it, but, but, it's a, but it's a whole mentality. I mean, it, it, it's, it's trickling down from the government. It's, it's not, it's a sort of a slow poisoning. You know, it's, it's this sort of, you know, income inequality. Yeah, why does that guy need three? Joe Rogan's got a bunch of cars. You drive them all at the same time? Yeah. So don't. so it should be equal. Everybody spread should, it out. Well, that's what people that don't have anything think. They think that everything should be socialism. Well, also, it's like none of your fucking business what I have or what I do. There's always going to be someone above me. There's mm -hmm. always going to be people below me. And by the way, hey, Joe Rogan, where are you going to be this weekend? Dallas. Okay, ask Adam Carolla where he's going to be this weekend. Where are you going to be this weekend? Adam Portland Carolla. and Seattle. Not on my sofa. Right. Not with a beer in my hand. Not playing, not throwing the ball with my kids in the backyard. Right, so poor people are lazy. Gotcha, man. I love how he makes that argument, and it genuinely appears like he's never read any arguments that are counter to that. It's like he developed this opinion, and he's just like, This is what it's like! This is what it is! I just made it up right now and thought about it, and this is what I think, and I'm not going to read any counter-arguments or think any deeper about this. I'm married to my uh, opinions, which are just stereotypes. Poor people are lazy. That's his argument. That's interesting. So then why is it that we have over 10 million working poor people in America? So people work full-time and don't make enough money to buy basic necessities. What do you have to say about that, Adam? Or uh, how about the fact that if poor people are lazy, then how is it that the minimum wage isn't a living wage? So again, they work full time, but somehow they're lazy? And a lot of people work full time and have, or, or work multiple jobs just to try to make ends meet, and they still can't make ends meet. So how again, if somebody's working and doing their best and they're still poor, how exactly? Do you point the finger at them and say, Meh, you're lazy, meh. But they're not lazy, they're working, so how are you gonna blame them for a shitty situation that they're in? No, see, this kind, these kinds of people, man, I mean, he's just not a deep thinker. I mean, he, his family, I think, uh, his parents, I think they were on some sort of government program when he was a kid, and he ended up having, of course, to use the government program, whether it was food stamps or whatever it was, and then now that he's grown up and he's successful, he wants to fucking burn the bridge behind him that he just walked over. Uh, it's inconceivable that this guy does not realize how ridiculous his arguments are. And it, here's what these people never understand, guys like Adam Carolla. It's that, let's say we live in Adam Carolla's utopia, and everybody in society literally puts in 100% effort day in and day out, no matter what. You know what's going to happen in that scenario? Not everyone is going to get the promotion because that's not possible. And not everyone can be a movie star or a CEO or the owner of a company because you can't have a society where everybody's a CEO or everybody's a movie star or everybody uh, uh, owns the company. You can't have that. So you need people to do those jobs that Adam Carolla 
is snobbishly dismissing. And I love how these guys call liberals elitist. They call liberals elitist. Oh, we're elitist, but look at you. You're basically mocking people who aren't rich. You're mocking people who aren't as well off as you, or you're saying, ah, oh, they all just want something, they want a free ride. Who? I, we want to be specific instead of just talking in absurd generalities? And also the idea that unemployed people, he makes it seem like, oh, they're just sitting on their couch and they're living the life, and that's all by choice. The idea that unemployed people are unemployed by choice? I mean, this is a guy who has no understanding of important macroeconomic factors. And he has no understanding of the ebb and flow of uh, an economy, a modern economy. Like, does he not get that there are more people than job openings? So if everybody woke up tomorrow, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to get a job, they still wouldn't all have a job. There'd still be unemployment because there's not enough jobs to accommodate all these people. According to Adam Carolla's dingbat theory, uh, when the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession hit, it apparently it's just the case that uh, after a few months, more people woke up and said, you know what, I don't want to work today. I'm just going to quit my job. When the unemployment rate went from like 5% to 10%, apparently 5% more of the American people woke up, according to Adam Kroll, and said, I'm lazy, I'm just going to sit on my couch and drink a beer. Or, dipshit, they got laid off. They want to work, they're trying to provide for their family and do the right thing, but macroeconomic factors made it so that they were fucking laid off. To the idea that, like, back in the day, people worked harder. No, they're still working hard. Show the chart here. We've showed this before on the show. This is productivity versus wage growth. So if you'll see there, the line that steadily rises, that's, that's productivity. So what that means is the American people have been busting their ass and working really hard all along from the 1980s and onward, but wages have flatlined, which means through no fault of their own, they're not getting as big a piece of the pie. And he makes it seem like liberals are arguing to give people a disproportionate piece of the pie that they didn't earn. That's not what we're arguing. We're arguing that they should get the piece of the pie that they did earn. I mean, the only kind of class warfare going on in this country is class warfare uh, that the rich are waging on the middle class and the poor. And again, this is something that apparently Adam Carolla has no fucking clue about, but he talks about it like he's some sort of expert here. Uh, like, does he not understand that you have corporations and well-off people giving donations to politicians, and then the politicians, when they get in power, they turn around and set policy in favor of the rich. So, for example, you have people who, they make their living, they make millions of dollars through investments, and they end up paying just 15% in taxes. Whereas, if somebody's a construction worker, or if somebody's an accountant, or if somebody's doing any normal job, if they're making like $80,000 a year, they're paying like 30%, 35% in taxes. Why is it that somebody who gets up and labors for a living and works a full-time job should pay 30% in taxes when Mitt fucking Romney, who sits on his ass all day, should pay 15% in taxes? There's your, your class warfare. It's class warfare uh, that the rich are waging on the middle class and the poor. Also, look at all the fucking tax havens overseas. Middle class and poor people pay their fucking taxes, whereas the rich just store all their shit in tax havens. Isn't it funny that when you don't pay your taxes, it's called tax evasion or tax avoidance, and your punk ass gets thrown in jail, but if a rich person doesn't pay their taxes, it's called a tax haven. Funny, it's no longer tax avoidance or tax evasion, it's a tax haven. And they get away with it, because they bought off the politicians. And we could go on and on, I mean, there's endless examples of you know, uh, rich people getting help while middle class and poor people get screwed. Look at the bailouts. The fucking bailouts. He's bitching about middle class people and poor people. I mean, the real socialism is going to the fucking rich. The real socialism is when you make shitty decisions with your investment firm and you end up destroying the company, but the government rushes in and says, here's a blank check with no rules attached to it. So you're complaining about the wrong fucking people, man. Back in the time that Corolla's portraying as some sort of an ideal, the system doesn't even reflect what he thinks it reflects. Like, he's acting like, you know, back in the day, in the 50s, you had these uh, people uh, learned how to work hard, and people uh, knew that this is how you act, and this is how you raise your way through the ranks. No, back then, the top marginal tax rate on people was between 70% and 90%. The top marginal tax rate on the rich. And today, that number's 39%. So your example is exactly backwards. 
If anything, now more we have a society of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And Adam Carolla uses that as an ideal at one point later on in his conversation with Joe Rogan. We should have a society where you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. All right, dipshit, it's more like that now than it was in your fake ideal that you made up in your head. Which again, by the way, this goes back to the whole idea of him being ignorant. It's like he just doesn't know. He doesn't know what the policies have been. He doesn't understand what liberals are actually asking for. He, he's just... He's creating a straw man and then arguing against the straw man. You, what law has been proposed that bans the number of cars you can have? Because that's his example. He's uh, asking Joe, oh, how many cars you have? You don't need that many cars. Name one liberal who said, let's propose a bill that bans the number of cars you can have, that restricts it, restricts it to one car. Doesn't exist, dude. You made it up because you're doing a caricature. You're, you're doing a st classic straw man argument. And... The final thing is, nobody on the left wants equality of income. All we want is equality of opportunity. So, to pretend like we all want everybody to make exactly $57,000 a year, and we all get a fair share, and that's what it's supposed to be like, there's only, like, six communists left in the world who are arguing for that. But you guys, or I should say, Corolla makes it seem like that's that's the bulk of the opposition, and that's how the government is functioning right now, when of course it's not. We live in a world where 85 people have more wealth than the bottom 3.5 billion. 85 people have more wealth than 50% of the world! I got news for you, Adam. It's not like those people just worked harder! No, the system is rigged. It's rigged. And these people oftentimes just get inheritance. They don't work harder. They're not richer because they worked harder. They're rich because they inherited money from granddaddy. Just like uh, the Koch brothers who got it from their dad or, you know, the Walton family who, of course, they didn't bust their ass. That's one family. Six people have more wealth than 40% of America. But again, you paint it like the rich are just morally superior and working harder and fuck everybody else. But that's not true. They're the lazy people. You want to complain about welfare queens? They're your fucking welfare queens. I mean, Walmart gets billions of dollars in subsidies every single year, and you're complaining about fucking poor people? Please. You just don't know what you're talking about. So stop talking about it.